right. So, how do you pronounce your last name? Pique. Uh, I'm not really. I'm not going to even try. I'm here with Piare, Pierre. Actually. My auntie's name is Pierre. Pierre. So, tell me a little bit about this experience. How long did you spend creating this? So it's been actually a two years crazy journey of just going to this crazy jungle of um, innovating, you know, in terms of content, and it's been roughly two years, but um, well packed into the last six months has been quite hectic. So, and in the final duration of it, because the hardest thing I found was like, how long is this piece? Yeah. It was almost felt like infinite. So, um, well, that's why we would like to make people believe that the experience starts uh, before wearing the headset or even after wearing the headset because we give this, we trigger and point at um, uh, making the imagine, people's imagination excited, you know, like we tell people, okay, you're going to go to the moon, we're going to uh, change into a space suit, you know, so we have signs and posters that lead to the sensation of um, going to an airport, or the, the spaceport, so then the imagination of the people are already uh, 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 engage, you know, people feel already engaged. So then when you try in the, in the pool, you know, because also of this continuation, you know, of the scenography, and then the content itself, and then that's why you feel like you lose a sense of time, you know. And if you have ever tried meditation, that's why sometimes you feel where, or even dreams, you know, you are somehow disconnected or at the same time reconnecting with yourself, and there's a part of subconscious that take over, and, and, and it's different from the experience of so-called reality. So it was like 10 minutes? <laughs> Nine minutes, right? Close to 10 it's, minutes? Yeah, close to 10 minutes. It was very important to have in the beginning an onboarding experience where um, these are like one and a half minutes of almost like a mirror-like uh, uh, shot, you know, of yourself floating in the water. You know, there's a, uh, a man you know, floating in the water in the surface, so you feel like it's a bit of yourself. Yeah. It's very important to go slowly you know, into the journey. What inspired you personally to create this journey that we went through visually? Okay, so, so yeah, I still like to look at that, right? No, no. Yeah, it's almost like this uh, stasi, <laughs> torture, you know, like, <laughs> like, yeah, like left, right, uh, this uh, vision. Uh, this is a good technique of uh, you know, psychological uh, torture, right? to, yeah, and how to look at people you are aware of. It's a different challenge for you. Different challenge for you. Focus. I'm afraid to go to jump to the water, okay, yeah, and I'm, because I'm afraid of my stitching lines, that's why I'm afraid to. Then, okay, I uh, became in two different stages, or three, let's say. One is, well, the first time I tried VR, I was very lucky. I was seven years old in 93. And it was in London at, uh, at um, I can't pronounce it, but Trafalgar Square. But it was a, a place called Sega Center, you know, where Sega was huge at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a paragliding experience. It was very basic, and you had to lie down on a sleeping bag and had this huge machine as a computer. Ooh. And then the same week, I discovered the, the, the same film called A Trip to the Moon by Georges Méliès, which is the first sci-fi film in 1902. And I don't know if you've seen you know, this iconic image of uh, a rocket going to, entering to the moon, to the face of the moon. So that's the Visual Effects Society's logo. I'm getting a pin, I'm getting a pin of that in like a week. He's a father because VFX and magic is basically magic, you know, uh, pre-render, you know, pre-render magic. And has been and and, and Mary, George Melias has been the father of VFX. For me, the father of fiction, of, of, of actually the cinema that I like, you know, the fantasy cinema, the science fiction, you know. And he has been an inventor. He has been a man who created an illusion, who, who triggered people's imagination, and and sense of fantasy, the sense of exploring, sense of wonder, you know. Maybe it's the kind of stuff that I also want to. Um, explore in my work, you know. So going back to your question about the, uh, the genesis of this piece, first time in 1993, I VR, got fascinated, you know, and then uh, two years ago, um, Ando Shah, the co-founder co of, sorry, founder of uh, Ballast with Stephen Greenwood and Atlas Rufus, uh, who created Ballast, the world's first VR headset, uh, waterproof, they, they came up with this technology, at the same time, um, so this is like a bit personal, but I must also say, I started working, I mean, sorry, being involved with an NGO specialized in the victims of sexual violence. Mm. And the piece is itself is about dissociation between the mind and the body. And one of the um, symptoms of uh, what people f uh, f uh, suffer from PTSD, which is sometimes, I mean, um, uh, people are victims of sexual violence, sometimes soldiers and so on. There's always this disconnection between, you know, body, mind and body. They sometimes feel desensitized, they sometimes feel the shame of their body and all that. And um, 
Thank you for your <laughs> well done. <laughs> Good conversation. Shall we go? And then the um, and I thought it was very fascinating to create an experience which is poetic, it's not therapeutic, but tend to make people you know feel reconnected with the body. So what you experience, so okay, why water? I guess the next question would be why water, why yeah. so it's very important that this, again, before, during, and after experience, you know, for me, and I designed the content for this, all these stages where, yes, you go to the moon, you feel a position of weightlessness, you feel zero gravity for, you know, basically nothing, you're not going to space, you're not spending, I don't know what's the price ticket to, to go to the moon right now, but I don't know what uh, SpaceX charges and all that. It's a bit pricey, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so now for $10 plus uh, taxes, you're going to the moon, and then the idea that when you go, you feel, I mean, very calm. This is the first, you know, first impression you might get when you come out of the headset and experience. But then when you go back to the, you know, uh, us, I mean, to so go back to, to the coming out of the swimming pool, you feel Earth gravity again. And I want people, and I want, it's not about going to the moon and feeling gravity. It's actually about feeling gra- Earth of, uh, gravity of Earth again. And that we take it for granted, and most of the astronauts will tell you that, that you feel a sense of wonder also coming back to Earth and then feel grounded, you know, and by this law of nature. Thank you for that great lesson. Yeah. Yeah. What, what software did you use, just briefly, because my battery is back? Yes, uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, the, the film True Lies, you know, yeah. at the end, where there's a speech of the terrorist, you know, talking about you know, <laughs> the other batteries there. And, um, so, uh, of course, uh, the workflow was interesting. So, uh, content creation, assets, uh, with all of my major parts 3D is Tilt Brush and Gravity Sketch. Yeah. Tilt, tilt Brush? Yeah. So you made this in a VR headset, yeah, part yeah. of it? Yeah, by well, well, the great uh, Sutu, S-U-T-U, great Austrian artist, 3D artist and art director. Uh, he's done many impressive work and is a master of this, of this 3D content creation, you know, which is very organic. And we left some of the brushes, you know, like a painting, like a Van Gogh, you know, where you feel it's a human behind who created this 3D world, you know. Then we, we, we inverted the colors, we mess around on Unity, and we use Unity as a pre-rendered um, software, which I believe that you know this is a great tool for the next class. I mean, not merge and marriage of the, the film world and the video game world industry, and I think comes through, it will, or it will automatically use um, Unreal or uh, Unity to you know to, 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 yeah to connect. Then we use all the Adobe Creative Suite, you know, of course Premiere, and I should mention. Uh, Mantra, the plugin by Meta, oh, yeah. we, we use a lot, and you know, I yeah, especially, yeah, so without Adobe, without Unity, uh, without Tilbrush, you know, this stuff won't have happened. Thank you so much for your time. You. If you're at Sundance, definitely check it out. Yes. I'm also going to link to your website in the description below. Check out his work. Thank you. Subscribe and leave a comment. It's oh, yes, and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hit that notification button. We'll see you in the next video. Okay. <laughs>